Hey folks, welcome to Wine School Debrief. Debrief. Woohoo! I'm Keith. I'm Alana. And today we are covering one of my classes. It's actually one of the most popular classes that's not about wine. You know what it is? I do know what it is. Well, what is it, Alana? It's beer and cheese. Yes, it's one of my pairing classes. Your pairing classes, classic. Oh, we've been doing it for so long. They're so amazing, and every time they're every time I do it, it's completely different. So, me personally, yeah, I like the beer and cheese pairings. You do so much. I think I might like it a little bit more than the wine and cheese. Yeah, oh, that's a hard pairing. It's, it's a, hard. It's a hard thing to say, but but. So be sure to watch through the entire video. Oh yeah. Oh, what it? Oh, what's at the end? Keith actually talks about the invention of the wheel. Oh, that's right. It that's... relates it to cheese. Oh, because it is. It's directly related to cheese. So I you forgot want to about hear that. that. Okay, cool, yeah. awesome. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Okay. Okay. Let's watch. This. Let's watch it. R is three words: ferment, preserve, age. That's it. This is actually, there's a reason why you exist here and why your grandparents, your great grandparents survived. Does anyone know why? Because they didn't die before they could have you or your parents or your grandparents, right? Well, <laughs> Classic Keith opener. Let's talk about death. Okay. Let's yeah. talk about your loved one's death. Yes. And then we'll get to the beer and cheese. Yeah. Amazing. Well, there is a reason, like, so I, I do I do tend to have, like, some, like, <gasps> shock intro because it's it's true how important uh, fermentation sciences were to our survival as a species. It can't be overestimated. It is critical. And that's why. So, yeah, like, starting there. Oh, it's, it's, I'm not saying it's not relevant, but yeah. of all the ways to the start, start. <laughs> yeah, there know, you go. I know. I know, that's awesome. You didn't die. Yeah, it is. No, you didn't die. Congratulations. <laughs> Welcome to Bear and Cheese. Yeah. <laughs> right, you know, and this is how the world works. We all know this, that we all know that there's entire swaths of human creation of humanity that just died somewhere on the edge and nothing else happened, right? This happens, right? Right? It's not just modern humans, it's Neanderthals, right? We all know that there's ends. And all of us, every last one of us, share this one moment in time, one moment in history about 10,000 years ago. Well, actually, and then again around 3,000 years ago, that we all share. Every human on the face of the earth shares it. It's that we survived a moment in time where the majority of humanity died. Just boom, right? Yes, guess what? It's like five minutes of this class, and I am just describing why, how everyone just died. Armageddon. Yeah, Armageddon. Like, ah, oh, you survived. Stop complaining. Okay. I know, I know. Oh my I'm, God, it's amazing. Oh, uh, yeah. And I, I'm leaning it. And after COVID, I leaned into this even further, right? This is post COVID. I'm really leaning into this. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I guess we all talk about how their children are going to die. I don't know. No, I don't talk about that. You know, I know it's that genocide, first thing in a beer class, but yeah, kind of, right? <laughs> but that's actually what it is and what it was because we all at that one moment and we notice, right? It's very, very simple. Uh, you have to, you just look at who was able to, you know, what, what people, what percentage of people could process milk outside of, you know, when they're adults. And it was actually close to zero before a moment in time, about 3,000 years ago. And then it was 80%, and then it was 90%. It shrunk since then. But every single culture, every single person on the face of the earth today actually is due to their ability to actually consume cheese. Even cultures that no longer actually eat, uh, consume cheese, like um, a lot of Asian cultures, if you look back 2,000 years ago, you see all the cheese production, you see all the beer producing and the wine producing equipment, even though even if today they didn't. Even cultures that now actually outlaw alcohol were at one point 
they drank beer or wine, all did. Every culture, every person, every belief. I mean, there's a reason why we actually identify things, right? I mean, it's part of our, almost our genetic coding, if you think about it. You, you know, you think, like, the first thing you think about, right? The first when you're a kid, you know, when you're 14 years old, you're like, I can, you know, I'll sneak a beer, right? Once you actually get used to the fact that beer is delicious and you don't have to steal it, you know, once you're, you know, a, you know, like, you know, you know, uh, you know, quantitatively an adult, you actually realize this thing is that you also want it with other things. And it's like this drive, right? It's not just like beer is amazing in specific scenarios, right? I was a winemaker, a professional winemaker for decades. And before I was a brewer. And what I, the first thing you do is when you actually are, have worked the 15, 16 hours in a vineyard, when you're dead tired, the last thing in the world you ever want to drink is wine. What you want is cheap ass beer and maybe a case of it. Because it is that thing. It's that amazing thing that you have. True story. <laughs> you know, oh, all, too, all too true. Yeah. A lot of beer is drunk to make to wine. Make wine. It, yeah. Yeah. I actually have a buddy who uh, he, he installed a keg. A tap. tap system wow. in his brewery. First thing he did. Amazing. Yeah. That it actually re, re, you know, it is all those carbohydrates, all those nutrients. It just makes you feel better. And it's also not when you're actually getting up after three hours of work, it's also not bad, you know, first thing is four o'clock in the morning either. Just FYI. If you ever work crush in the winery, you will realize every winery is built on beer. And in fact, uh, one of the things, one of the greatest things I ever saw is actually one of my students who's now a winemaker. He actually, his winery showed me they have the, the just taps, yeah, in the winery so that they have kegged taps, perfect. Because that's what you, you know, so there is a, this thing, this element, and when you actually combine with cheese, it's this thing. And you may not realize how, what an amazing moment in time in the Neolithic era, how this was, this technology. Because this technology was, with you, the first thing you had to do was invent the wheel. And the wheel was not invented for travel. It was actually invented for pottery. And one of pottery's first uses was actually to make cheese. So this fundamental thing. And then it was used to store beer and wine. And you need to store these. these this is a moment in time that within 10,000 years, we actually had all this technology and allowed us one thing. It allowed us to move. It allowed us to do the one thing we have to do. You know, we all live in Philly. Like, you ever drive 76 and ever just be able to stay in one lane? Right? There's going to be, right? We're post, -pan we're post pandemic, everyone's angry. So, like, you know, there's some dude who's, you know, like, thinks he's actually in a bad movie with The Rock and he's swerving around, and you know, you're going to have to move out of his way, right? You're going to have to get out of people's way, right? This is just the world, right? We live in, you know, Imagine not being able to get out of anyone's way. Imagine just being stuck in one place, right? Generation after generation. When you actually have beer and cheese, you know what you can do? You can pick up and go because you have carbohydrates and nutrients that you can actually put into amphora, into clay pots and travel elsewhere. So this is the point that I'm gonna make is that actually, this is not just an awesome, fun thing. It's actually essential. It's actually something we all share it's actually something we all have in common, every single person. It's part of our shared history. And anybody, right? And that is actually part of what we start with because in this class, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take you through each of these cheeses, and let's just walk through this for a second. Each of these cheeses are at a specific moment in time. This is every single cheese ever made from the beginning of history. It's on your plate. That's fascinating. Yes, right? Everyone can process that cheese, our ancestors. Our ancestors, yes. Yeah, we could, yeah, because there is no, yeah, this lactose is not similar to the ones that, uh, it's a very different kind of sugar. It's short chain fatty acids are different. We could process that. So um, people who are lactose uh, intolerant can actually drink uh, goat's milk. Wow. Absolutely. And Keith, just for the benefit of folks at home, yeah. what were the other cheeses? Because you basically said you're giving them 
samples oh, of it. Oh, yeah. You know, every cheese ever made. Do you, can you give us a rundown? I can give you a rundown. It's not going to make that much sense, but I absolutely can because we start with a, a soft cheese like here, mm -hmm. Chevron. Yeah. All right. And then we migrate to the next stage, which is actually camembert or brie. Sure. That's okay. the next stage of development. Okay. After that, we go to semi soft cheese. Um, and that's in. Those are your classic, like Swiss Alp cheeses. They're okay. semi soft, melty cheeses. Okay. Oh, one of those. It can be Harvardi. Okay. But and then from Harvardi, then we then we then we move into uh, into our hard cheeses. Uh, we start with a Gruyere, mm -hmm. and then into a cheddar, and then finally into into a real Strabecchio Parmesan. Beautiful. So yes, and we go the whole class. But why those matter, and why those are very important stages of cheese making and all the pairings with them. Really, really fun. Really awesome. great class. And um, also, I always wear this shirt whenever I teach a beer <laughs> class. It's just contractual obligation. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you'll see me. Yeah. It's been the same shirt for 10 years. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Not a true fact. This is the cheese that are great. This is the first cheese. The very first cheese. And has anyone here made cheese, like actually made cheese? No? Not on purpose. Good good answer. That's the best answer I've ever gotten, actually. No, because it's true. Because you've all actually started the process of making cheese. You didn't know it. When you actually, you know, poured your cream into your coffee and was, you know, separated. And, right? You've all accidentally in, into, your, into your, your cereal in the morning and it's curdled. Right? Curdled. Do you ever, uh, you, you, what does that smell like? You ever smell it, right? Yeah. It smells, it smells freaking like, it actually smells like the Saison. Sorry, the, uh, the sour, it smells like that. It has a, like, a very bacterial, nasty, mushroomy nose. And then if you accidentally drink it, like I've done that where you pour your cream, you don't realize and you drink it, you have, yeah, 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 that smile means you've done that. And um, so you drink that coffee and what does it taste like? It would be accidentally having the, the spoiled cream. Sour. sour. Funk and sour, right? Sound familiar? Yeah. What you have in what you accidentally did was the beginning cheese. That was making, you made curds and whey, right? Because bacterial fermentation already started and it separated the curds, which are the thick bits, in the whey, which is the acidic liquid. And yeah, this is where whey powder comes from. When you dry that out, it's, you know, it's actually a lot, of, a lot of nutrients. But we, the, the whey, we separate and we keep the curds. And the curds, you actually strain. This was the original why we had pottery, was because they would have holes in the bottom and they would actually allow it, or cloth, and allow the water to drip out. And what you have left is the curd. There it is. There you go. Oh, yes, it is. And to continue with that idea, that's one of the, the, the pottery, it was essential, wheels were essential to make pottery. It was essential to store beer and to make uh, cheese. And wow. yeah, it was one of the first uses of long before we had uh, wheels for, for cars and chariots. Because you need to invent, <laughs> the, the thing about that is you need to invent the road before you can invent the wheel for a chariot. Got it. So yeah. Fascinating. Yes. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was an awesome class. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Very much. Hope you did too. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.